So let's continue our exploration of the span of a set of vectors by considering the geometric interpretations of the span in R3. And in particular, we're going to look at the span of a single vector as well as the span of two vectors. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and let vector u and vector v be two non-zero vectors in R3. And we want to go ahead and let c and d be any scalars our little hearts desire. So case number one is the span of a single vector u. So the span of vector u is simply the collection of all scalar multiples of vector u. So this is the collection of all scalar multiples of vector u. So you could also say that this is the collection of all linear combinations of vector u, but don't forget, you're just thinking about a single vector here. So saying the collection of all scalar multiples is sufficient. Right here is that linear combination of vector u, aka the scalar multiple of vector u. So what is this collection going to look like graphically? So here we have space. We have the x sub 1, x sub 2, and x sub 3 axes. And let's say that here from the origin is our beautiful vector u. So what is the span of this vector going to look like graphically? Well, let's keep the definition in mind here. The span of vector u is the collection of all scalar multiples of vector u. So let's suppose for a moment that our scalar c is greater than zero. All right, well, that means that we're producing a parallel vector moving in a positive direction infinitely. Great. What about if this same scalar c then is less than zero? Well, then it's going to be moving in the opposing direction, your negative direction, infinitely. And this is the span of that vector. This is the collection of all possible linear combinations of vector u. So graphically, the span of vector u is a line in R3 that passes through vector u and the origin. So graphically, the span of vector u is a line in R3 passing through vector u and the origin. Or the zero vector. So there you have it. The span of a single vector is the collection of all scalar multiples of that vector. And graphically, the span is a line in R3 that passes through that vector u and the zero vector. So in case two, we want to consider the span of vector u and vector v. So what is the span of this? This is the collection of all linear combinations of these two vectors. So the span of vector u and vector v is the collection of all possible linear combinations, and I'll abbreviate linear combos for combinations of vector u and vector v. And so we can go ahead and denote this as the sum of all scalar multiples of vector u plus all scalar multiples of vector v. And again, this is such that C and D are those scalars, or the weights, or the coefficients. So the span of vector u and vector v is the collection of all possible linear combinations of these two vectors. So what is this going to look like graphically? So again, from the origin, we'll say here is a beautiful vector u, and somewhere over here is a lovely vector v. So we know one linear combination right off the bat from the parallelogram rule. So from the terminal point of vector u, I can draw a parallel vector v. And we can even go ahead from the terminal point of vector v, we can draw a parallel vector u. So the parallelogram rule tells us that 
the sum of these two vectors, vector u plus vector v, or vector v plus vector u in this case, is the vector along the main diagonal of that parallelogram. So there is a linear combination of vector u and vector v, where both scalars are 1. So that's just one possible case of this linear combination. So we're shading in all of those possible linear combinations that occur within the parallelogram. So we're starting to see what this span is graphically. But don't forget right, that we have all possible linear combinations of vector u. So here's that line, scalar c times vector u. And we have all possible linear combinations of vector v. So here's that line, scalar d times vector v. So we can even expand this further. So graphically, what we're seeing is that the span of these two vectors, vector u and vector v, is a plane in R3. So in this plane must pass through vector u and vector v, or as well as the zero vector. And additionally, this plane is going to contain the line passing through vector u and the zero vector, as well as the line passing through vector v and the zero vector. So we have to include all those possible scalar multiples of each singleton vector. So this is the span of vector u and vector v. And of course, keep in mind here that I have only shown a finite region of this span. Planes extend infinitely in all directions. So graphically, we say that the span of vector u and vector v is a plane in space. So a plane in R3 that's passing through vector u, vector v, and the zero vector. Now, in addition to this plane in three dimensions passing through vector u, vector v, and the zero vector, this plane also contains two lines. So it also contains the line passing through vector u and the zero vector, as well as the line passing through vector v and the zero vector. So there you have it. We have the span of two vectors is a plane in three dimensions that's passing through the vector u, vector v, and the zero vector. And this plane in R3 also contains the lines, the first line passing through vector u and the zero vector, and all the scalar multiples of vector u, as well as the line passing through vector v and the zero vector. So all the scalar multiples of vector v.